Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's do that again. Is he worthy tonight? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Jesus, you are good. Hallelujah. Have you enjoyed yourself? Man, we have had some word. Anybody enjoyed themselves the last couple of days? Or oh, is that all? Hallelujah. I've heard some good stuff. Brother Huntley and Brother Tony, my goodness. Man, I've enjoyed every bit of it. And it is my honor tonight to bring a man to the pulpit that needs no introduction to Wisconsin. What a wonderful, godly man. And I am so thankful to also call him friend. So honored that he is in my life. And I am just, it's just a privilege to be able to bring Brother Booker. And I, we're going to ask, we're going to hear some good word from him tonight. Can you give him a hand clap? Oh, let's clap our hands to the Lord. Amen. Let's give him praise. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. And I <laughs> God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Thank you, Brother Fletcher. Thank you, Revival Commission, Brother Lee Andrus, Amen. District Board. I'm thankful for Brother Herman and Brother Pace and Brother Meyer and Brother uh, Jacobs and Brother Parker and Brother Fletcher. We have an incredible district board. I wish you'd give them a hand. Amen. 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 Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. I can't think of, you know, it's an honor to be asked to preach uh, in other states. It's an incredible honor to be involved in different meetings, but it is really quite an honor to be asked to preach in your own state. So I do not take this assignment lightly. Uh, I am so blessed by the ministry of Brother Tony and by Brother Huntley, and I will do my best to do my assignment and let Brother Huntley come and preach the word. I draw your attention to 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, verse 1 and 2, and then I will go down to verse 16 of that same chapter. Amen. I know my uh, wife was not able to be here, and uh, she wishes she could. But she's watching right now, and I want her to know I love her with all my heart. She's the greatest thing uh, next to Jesus Christ. And so I'm thankful for Mary Elizabeth. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Skipping down to verse 16 of this same chapter. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself, and God, even our Father, which hath loved us, hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Everybody say good hope. I want to preach to you for a little bit on this thought, unshakable hope. Father, we love you. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be in the house of God tonight. Thank you for this midwinter camp. I thank you, Lord, for everybody that's in this place tonight. I thank you, Lord, for every church that's represented. Lord, in this section, I believe, dear God, that there is something unprecedented that is about to happen. And I believe that, and I want to be a part of it. And I'm thankful that everyone here tonight wants to be a part of it. I pray let something be birthed here today. Oh, God, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You can be seated. If you've ever traveled south on Interstate 41 or Interstate 43, uh, going to Milwaukee from Green Bay, then you have passed the exit for Good Hope Road. It is a major thoroughfare across the north side of Milwaukee. It was named for the community of Good Hope, 
which is no longer in existence. It at one time hosted an inn and a post office. The significance of the community of Good Hope was that it was the stopping point for the mail stage between Milwaukee and Green Bay. That's its only real claim to fame. It was the place where they would bring, I believe the state coach, <laughs> bring the mail, and they would bring it from Green Bay to Good Hope, and it would go from Good Hope to Milwaukee, and from Milwaukee it would go uh, to Good Hope, and then from Good Hope it would come to Green Bay. I have often wondered as I have traveled on Interstate 41 or Interstate 43, I've wondered what are the people like that live on Good Hope Road? Are they more positive than the people that live on Silver Spring Drive? Do they have a more upbeat personality than the people who live on Capitol Drive? Or is there nothing particularly special about the people that live on Good Hope Road. Paul, in writing to the Thessalonians, encourages them to live on Good Hope Road. He says in verse 16, Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. I, I could take a long time tonight, and I will not, to, but to address the subject of, that Paul is dealing with in chapter 2 of Second Thessalonians. Uh, but let me be very brief and simple. There were those who had tried to convince the church at Thessalonica that the Lord had already come for his church and that they had missed it. Uh, they were understandably upset and troubled. So Paul wrote to them not to be shaken in mind, uh, for the rapture had not yet occurred. For he said in verse 1, again, let me read this. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind. Or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that day of Christ is at hand. The premise of Paul's writing is to assure the Thessalonians that they didn't miss the rapture. Paul wanted to assure the Thessalonians that, as he said in verse 16, I'm not trying to be so repetitive here, but I'm trying to drive home a point. He said, now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which has loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Here, Paul wanted to assure the Thessalonians of something. He wanted to assure them that Jesus loves them and Jesus is always near to them and Jesus' grace is available to to them. Therefore, they have a good hope. So it is today, we must not be shaken in mind because Jesus loves us, because Jesus is always near to us, because Jesus' grace is available to us. Where sin doth abound, grace doth much more abound. We can live our lives on Good Hope Road. Society defines hope as a feeling that what is wanted will happen. Uh, understood in this way, uh, hope can denote either baseless optimism uh, or a vague yearning after an unattainable goal. Uh, hope then, by the world's definition, is uh, I want a million dollars. Uh, I want a new car. Uh, I want a life with no problems. Uh, uh, but the thing is, uh, hey man, they somehow hope it's going to happen. Uh, but if these wants uh, are not obtained, uh, if these hopes are not received, then their life appears to be hopeless. If hope is to be genuine, hope, it must be founded on something or someone which affords reasonable grounds for confidence in its fulfillment. I'm here to declare God alone is the ultimate ground and object of hope. Biblical hope is the expectation of a favorable outcome under God's guidance. Hope is a trustful expectation 
expectation that God will do what he said that he would do. Uh, society bases its hope on what it feels uh, it wants, uh, while the Bible bases its hope uh, in God uh, and in his salvation. Uh, it is futile uh, to put your hope uh, in wealth uh, or in houses uh, or in people uh, or in jobs uh, or in governments. Uh, Jesus uh, and Jesus only uh, is a rock uh, that cannot be moved uh, and a refuge and a fortress uh, who provides ultimate security. Uh, Jesus is the Savior, uh, the source of life, uh, the rock on which hope is built. Uh, this is why you can expect a favorable outcome uh, because with the Lord uh, Jesus Christ, uh, there is hope. We're living in a strange day. We're living in a day when anything that can be shaken will be shaken. We are living in a day that is so crazy. It's so mixed up. It's so messed up. But while anything that can be shaken will be shaken, there is, amen, something that cannot be shaken. While the foundations of our society crumble around us, the church stands unshakable. Amen. While everything seems to be moving, Amen. Un they're unshakable. Uh, the church is unshakable to the growing opposition that's coming against it. Uh, unshakable in our calling and in our mission. The kingdom of God cannot be moved. Uh, it is unshakable. Uh, amen. The church uh, is a pillar in the ground of the truth. Uh, it is unshakable. Uh, our mission to go into all the world uh, and preach the gospel to every creature is unshakable. Uh, when the world is mixed up and crazy, remember that God is not mixed up and he's not crazy. When the things for which society stands is wrong, understand that Jesus Christ is right. When the world is off course, the Lord is right on course. I am the way, the truth, and the life. We have an unshakable hope because the kingdom of God is unshakable. The church of the living God is unshakable. Our mission to reach the lost is unshakable. You and I tonight have an unshakable hope because of what God has done in the past. Paul wrote to the Romans and said, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, uh, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures uh, might have hope. Uh, Israel was in bondage in Egypt, uh, and their taskmasters treated them inhumanely. Uh, the Lord heard Israel's cry and the, delivered them from Egypt. Uh, this story is more than a history lesson from the life of the Israeli nation, but it is a story of hope uh, for you uh, and for me. If God heard the cries of those Israelites in Egypt, he will hear your prayers. If God had the ability to deliver Egypt from their bondage, he has the ability to deliver you from your bondage. Noah, Job, Moses, Samuel, David, Ruth, Daniel, Deborah, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, all the problems, all the difficulties, the solutions, the victories that the Bible records are written that you might have hope. Hope is a confidence that what God has done in the past guarantees our participation in what God will do in the future. If the Lord has ever helped you in the past, you better believe in 2022, you have a hope that he will help you in the future. You and I have an unshakable hope because of the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ. Uh, Paul told the Colossians, uh, this in Colossians 1, uh, if you continue in the faith, uh, grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven. I was going to drive by Good Hope Road and see how many for sale signs there were on that road. 
I thought, why would you want to move from Good Hope Road? Amen. But I'll tell you what, I don't want to move away, amen, from the hope of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The good news is the fact that God came to dwell among men, Emmanuel, God with us, and Jesus is his name, that Jesus Christ was born in a manger in Bethlehem to be your Savior, to be my Savior, for he came to seek and to save that which was lost. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the good news that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, spent three days in a grave, but on that Easter morning, he rose alive forevermore. Don't be moved away from the hope of the gospel. To lose hope is to choose to move away from the gospel of Jesus Christ. There is hope for our world. There is hope for our world. And it's found in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Repentance, baptism in his name, the infant of the Holy Ghost. Peter tells us that we have a lively hope because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He said this in First Peter, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. A lively hope literally means a living hope, a present hope, not relegated to a future alone, but a present hope. I don't just celebrate Easter, amen, once a year, but every day I live, he's alive. Amen. And I've got a hope, praise the Lord. This Jesus Christ shed his blood for you. Jesus died for you. Jesus came to save you. Jesus loves you. You have hope because of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have an unshakable hope because of what he's done in the past. We have an unshakable hope because of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you and I have an unshakable hope because of the infilling of the Holy Ghost. True hope is produced by receiving the Holy Ghost. Paul said to the Colossians, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hope is kept alive through the power of the Holy Ghost. Paul wrote to the Romans, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something. I don't know, amen, what's going on in your world. I don't know how inflation has affected you. I don't know how COVID has affected you. I don't know how the government's affected you, but I know something. If you've got the Holy Ghost, you've got the the power of God to give you hope. The happiest people, the most joyful people, the people that should be most filled of peace in 2022 are the people that are full of the Holy Ghost. Hope is kept alive through the power of the Holy Ghost. Hopelessness comes by two things. Not having received the indwelling of Christ's Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Ghost here tonight, I am so happy to tell you something. Before you leave this place, you can and will receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You will speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. What they received on the day of Pentecost, it's still being poured out today, and you can receive it. There is hope. Hopelessness is caused by two things. Either if you don't have the Holy Ghost or you're trying to live in the energy of your own power after you have received the Holy Ghost. Now, I don't get it. I don't understand it. But I know this, that just because you got the Holy Ghost, just because I got the Holy Ghost doesn't mean I cannot be ruled and led by the flesh. I think we ought to try it Jesus' way. The Holy Ghost, <clears throat> the Holy Ghost produces a hope that is unashamed. Romans 5.3, look at this. And not 
only so. Amen. But we glory in tribulation also. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And patience experience. And experience hope. Hope maketh not ashamed. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. We don't have a foolish hope. We don't have a silly hope. But we have a proper hope because of the power of the Holy Ghost. I am not a pie in the sky when you die by and by, my friend. I've got something inside of me, and you've got something inside of you. Amen. That will give you a hope. You do not have to be ashamed. I'm not saying we don't got troubles. I'm not saying we don't got problems. I'm not saying that I don't like everything going on, but I'm telling you what, I've got an unshakable hope because of the power of the Holy Ghost. If you have received the Holy Ghost like they did in the Bible, then every day you need to be telling yourself, I have a hope because Christ is living in me. I have a hope because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The Holy Ghost generates the power for us to experience abounding hope. Again, Romans uh, 15, 13. I don't know if you've got that, Sister Andrea, but now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing that you may abound in hope. You know what that word abound means? That word abound means more. It's just overflowing. It's more than any one person could ever experience. you got to understand something. You're going to go to work, and there's going to be people that are going to feel hopeless. But you're walking in there, and you might not say a word, but you've got something inside of you. You've got an abounding hope. You've got more hope than you need. You've got hope for the person that you work with. You've got hope for the people that you live with. You've got hope. Praise the Lord abounding abounding hope we have been commissioned to share our hope you and I have hope because of what he's done in the past you and I have hope because of the gospel you and I have hope because of the Holy Ghost and you and I have hope we have an unshakable hope because of the soon return of Jesus Christ my hope is not that this world is going to get better. My hope is not that there's going to be change in midterm uh, election, although I'll vote. Uh, but I'll tell you what, my hope is not in who is in the Capitol, who's in the White House. Uh, amen. My hope is in Jesus Christ coming back for his church. Uh, amen. Paul said it this way. Uh, amen. And to Titus, looking for that blessed hope uh, and the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, the blessed hope of the church uh, is nothing less than the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. When I was growing up we used to sing songs like this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. Oh we used to sing oh I want to see him look upon his face. Amen. I tell you what there was something that was birthed within me and that is this world's not my home. I hope you all get raises. I hope you all get new cars. I hope you get big houses this year in 2022 but I hope you don't lose of what our real hope is and that is a soon return of Jesus Christ. Hope, the trustful expectation that God will do what he said that he would do. Don't move from the hope that is in Jesus Christ. May we in 2022 be possessed with an unshakable hope. David said this in Psalm 62, 5. My soul wait thou upon God, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. The word expectation in the Hebrew literally means accord as in an, as in an attachment. David had attached himself to the Lord. David had tied himself to the Lord and he was counting on him to pull him out of any situation. 
like plugging a cord into an electric outlet and expecting current. So you can plug into the Lord and expect him, if you could say, let me say it this way, expect him to give you juice, praise the Lord. Too many people expect others to give them hope. Our expectation must be in Jesus Christ. Jesus is our source of power. David declared that our God is our salvation and he's our glory. David declared that our God is our rock and strength. David declared our God is our refuge. If we realize this, folks, what else do we need? Come on, what else do we need? He's our salvation. He's our glory. He's our rock of strength. He's our refuge. I shall not be moved. Amen. I'm resting upon the fact of who Jesus Christ Christ is. He loves me. He is near to me. His grace is available to me. I've got a good hope. Praise the Lord. Amen. People will let us down, but Jesus Christ will never let us down. We should not expect anything from people, but we should expect something from Jesus Christ. I'm thankful you're here tonight. I really am. I'd hate to just be preaching to those 22 billion people out there. But I want you to know some people may not show up, but I expect the presence of the Lord every time I come to church. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Praise the Lord. Amen. My loved ones may not love me, but I expect the Lord to love me. But God commanded his love head toward us and that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us praise the Lord I can't count on others to bring me peace but I can expect Jesus Christ to bring me peace the Lord will give strength unto his people the Lord will bless his people with peace some individuals may refuse to forgive but I expect the Lord to forgive because if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness as much as some may want to protect me their powers are limited but I expect the Lord to be my guard and to be my protector Isaiah said when thou passest through the waters I will be with thee and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee when thou walkest through the fire thou shalt not be burned neither shall the flame kindle upon thee I can't expect others to meet my needs but I expect Jesus to but my God shall supply all my needs hallelujah all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus it is unfair to expect people to meet your longings but hear me tonight church you can expect Jesus Christ to meet the longings of your life for he satisfieth the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness my hope for security in the future is very limited but when it comes amen from people but I expect the Lord to keep me securely in all my tomorrows. Jude said it this way. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and ever. Amen. I expect the Lord to do something in my life tonight. He wants to do something in your life tonight. If you'll expect him to. I'm not waiting for the latest news conference from Dr. Fauci, I'll tell you that. But I'm expecting Jesus Christ to meet me, to bless me to touch me, to forgive me if I repent, uh, to deliver me, uh, to help me, uh, to lead and guide me. Uh, Jesus is here uh, and there is not anything that he cannot do. Uh, we just need to put our expectations in him. We just need to choose to live on the road named Good Hope. Amen. Solomon writes this, a wise, Proverbs 21, 22, a wise man 
scaleth the city of the mighty and casteth down the strength of the confidence thereof. It's an insight that is used for years. And that is the way to defeat an enemy that is too mighty for you is to attack their confidence. One quick example, the Philistines. Do you think they really enjoyed sending Goliath out 30 days in a row? Choose you a man. Ah. And uh, our champion will defeat your champion. If your champion defeats my champion. Do oh, you, know, you think they enjoyed that? No, but they counted noses. And the Philistines were smart enough to realize army for army, they could not defeat the Israeli army. So what did they do? They brought Goliath out and Israel lost their confidence in their abilities. The devil is a deceiver. He tries to get us to lose our confidence in God. Every day, I believe this, every day, he places a strategic attack against our confidence. Little things here <clears throat> and there. Eventually, it will lead us to defeat if we allow it to. The devil wants us to come to, play, to a place where we lose all hope because we do not expect the Lord to help us. He tries to shake us in our thoughts and beliefs. He tries to shake us in our doctrinal beliefs, in the gospel. He tries to shake us in our belief in the power of the Holy Ghost. He tries to shake us in the belief of the Word of God. He tries to shake us in the reality of heaven and the rapture of the church. He tries to shake us in our mind. The words of warning Paul gave to Thessalonians some 2,000 years ago are still appropriate for us today. Be not soon shaken in mind. You, you got to hear me today. I've preached a lot of verses of scripture. I've tried to challenge you to get to understand something. You got to get this in your mind. It's going to be a part of you. Praise the Lord. You cannot in any way be shaken in mind. There's shaking that's going on and you can talk about a whole lot of things. There's more earthquakes than there's ever been. But the greatest concern I have of the shaking that's going on is the shaking in mind that is taking place in the church of the living God. My God, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What God did in the Bible, he will do for you today. I believe that what Malachi records, for I am the Lord, I change not. How we need to believe what God says in his word, he will do. I realize that we are living in a day of sifting and of shifting and of shaking, but but we must not be shaken in mind. Amen. Today, like never before, we must have an unshakable hope in Jesus Christ. He has not changed. He is still able to protect. He's still able to give victory. He's still able to calm the storm. He's still able to provide. He's still able to heal. He is still able to deliver. He's still able to fill the Holy Ghost. He's able to save to the uttermost. We need to place our hope in Jesus Christ. Respect his power and his word to be confirmed. In our lives, we've been given a good hope. Let's stand. We have been given a good hope. Four men were carrying their sick friend, and they were talking. I know where he is, and we're going there. What if he won't see us? He'll see us. Do you think this is too bad for him? No. They came to a house. It was filled with very important people. Went to the door, couldn't get in the door. Windows, if there were windows, couldn't get in the windows. But they didn't turn back. They believed that their need was greater than anyone else. They believed that Jesus Christ would heal their sick friend. They came to the house expecting a miracle. What commotion took place? As they lowered their friend in the presence of Jesus Christ. Jesus didn't get upset. He didn't rebuke them for this rude and unwelcome interruption. The Pharisees, the doctors of the law, didn't receive a healing that day. Although the Bible specifically records the power of the Lord was present to heal them. The reason being they didn't come expecting to receive a healing because their hope was not in Jesus Christ. But the man sick of the palsy and his friends 
hope was in Jesus Christ. So that man sick of the palsy left healed and the others in the room left murmuring. The men carrying their sick friend had an unshakable hope in the power of Jesus Christ. Our world needs hope. Our world needs hope. Our world needs hope. And we have the hope our world needs. We are like those individuals carrying their sick friend to Jesus in that crowded room. Only we're carrying hurting, frightening, and lost men and women, boys and girls, to Jesus Christ in a world whose minds are crowded with confusion. May we have an unshakable hope in the advancement of the kingdom of God. Nothing will stop God's kingdom. Nothing will stop God's kingdom. May we have an unshakable hope in the relevance and the importance of the church. The church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. You better believe you need the church like you've never needed it before. May we have an unshakable hope in the mission of the church, reaching frightened, confused, and lost people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's so many things that could shake us in our minds to get us to lose hope. May our hope be in the love of Jesus Christ, the nearness of Jesus, in his grace. May our hope be unshakable. Our world needs hope. And we have the hope our world needs. But you cannot give what you don't have. Don't be shaken in mind. May we have an unshakable hope. He caught up in Jesus Christ. Every person in this place, young or old, visitor, guest, preacher, amen, saint of God, lift your hands to the Lord right now. I pray in the name that's above every name, baptize us. Baptize us with an unshakable hope. Baptize us with a hope like we've never had before. A hope, praise the Lord, that you're still God, that you're still in the throne, you're still in control. Baptize us with an unshakable hope. But that hope is not just for us. That hope is for our world. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, <laughs> Jesus. Aren't you thankful for that unshakable hope we have in Jesus?